Look, we're all human and we're not gonna be able to get that perfect six, seven, eight hours of sleep every night. Heck, I would argue that most of us probably get that less than half the time. Okay, that's just the sad truth of today's society. We can't always just change the pace of the world. So what I've come up with is four ways that you can get more out of your shorter sleep. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you to sleep longer. I'm gonna tell you some ways that you can get into that deeper sleep and get the most out of what little sleep you can get. If you've got kids, you know the way that this is. You just have to function. You don't have a choice. So we're gonna break down four different ways. I've got new videos coming out all the time, almost every single day. So please hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. All right, the first thing I'm gonna give you is actually a sleep hack. This isn't necessarily for sleeping. This is something you can do during the day if you have the luxury of being able to take a 15 minute nap. Okay, listen to this, it's called a coffee nap hack. Here's how this works within your body. We have something known as adenosine. Adenosine is produced in what's called the forebrain. Okay, so the forebrain releases this adenosine and the adenosine helps us sleep. So basically, what, here's what happens. Throughout the day, adenosine builds and builds and builds and builds. And finally, it hits our receptors to a point where it's built up so much, it makes us crash out and get tired. That's what essentially allows us to get tired. Caffeine blocks adenosine, right? So what happens is when we drink a cup of coffee, the adenosine receptor is blocked, so adenosine can't hit the receptor to make us tired. We're blunting the tiredness. Okay, well here's the thing. There is a latency, there is a length of time from the time you drink that coffee to how it actually affects your adenosine receptors. So what you'd wanna do is you wanna have your coffee and then immediately take a nap. Okay, so even if you are just tired midday and you're like, I don't wanna have my coffee because it's just gonna mess up my sleep. No drink a cup of coffee, and then hit that nap, and hit that nap hard for 15 minutes. It's all you need. Here's what happens. Because you nap, the extra adenosine gets let into the receptor, okay? It heals that issue for a minute, okay? All the adenosine that's making you tired gets just relieved and goes into the receptor. Well, then the caffeine comes in and blocks the receptor from any more adenosine hitting. So you actually kill two birds with one stone. You allow yourself to immediately get recovered because the adenosine gets drained and goes away and activates the receptor, but then you block any more from building up. So basically it makes it so that you can have that caffeine without crashing later, but get a very restorative effect. In fact, there was a study that was published in Psychophysiology that took a look at people that were uh, using a driving simulator. If they would get tired while they were driving, like we normally would, and then they would consume the caffeine, take a 15 minute power nap right after consumption of coffee, and then they ended up having a 91% improvement in their overall wakefulness when they went back to the driving. Like crazy. Like normally you drink some coffee and it might get you through it a little bit, you're still woozy, but this actually fixed the issue. They were fine until bedtime and then they slept normally. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is allowing yourself to get progressively cooler as you sleep. Okay, it's no crazy rocket science to know that when we get cooler, we sleep better, right? Like we know that old thing. We know that if you get your body cool before you go to sleep, you might fall asleep faster. Well, that's great for falling asleep. What about for staying asleep and getting into deeper sleep? Okay, here's what's happening. Our bodies are creating a temperature gradient. People think that it's all about trying to cool off the core. It's actually our body trying to dissipate heat out to the limbs and that's creating an interesting gradient. So what's happening is because our limbs are cooler, blood is dissipating out to the limbs and getting away from the core. Okay, because it's getting away from the core at that point in time, it's creating this gradient that lets us sleep. It's actually the opposite of what people typically think. So you definitely want to avoid wearing socks, wear, avoid wearing gloves and things like that, okay? You want to get as cool as possible. The other thing is don't eat within an hour and a half of going to bed. Why? Because it drives all the blood flow into your stomach that's going to wake you up, not because of digestion, but because of heat, okay? It's the heat, it's the thermic effect. All the blood is going to your core and that's waking you up. You want the blood to create that gradient. Here's the big problem. We get nice and cool before bed and we lay in a mattress. And then we lay in that mattress and what happens? The sheets and the mattress just absorb our heat and we end up just incubating in this, just heat in an oven, okay? We don't realize it's an oven and then we wake up. Why? Because from an evolutionary standpoint, as soon as things start to warm up, our bodies think that it's daytime. It thinks it's morning time, we're waking up. So our body just naturally comes out of that REM cycle. So even if it's cool in the room, it can be really, really difficult. Now, if you guys are interested, there is something known as the chili pad, and you've probably seen them floating around because people talk about it on Instagram and social media all the time. I went ahead and I put a link for chili pad down in the description. This is a cool thing, it goes on your mattress and then it has a machine that pumps really cold air and water through these little teeny tubes and it keeps the mattress really cold. It's a, literally a pad that goes on top of your mattress with a cool machine. It is 
epic, and it changes the way that you sleep. It changes the way that I sleep, so I think that you guys might want to try it out when it comes down to just keeping your body cool throughout the night, because what happens is your temperature just slowly starts to rise, and there's a linear equation that shows as your temperature rises, you come out of REM and you wake up, but if you stay cold, then your REM goes up and you stay in a deeper sleep. It really is miraculous stuff. We're not designed to be sitting in this incubation of heat all the time. In fact, there's a study that was published in the Aviation, Space, and Environmental Journal. Took a look at 10 men and it monitored their sleep. One went into a regular kind of warmish room and another went into a cold room. Okay, what they found with this crossover design is that when they were in the warm room, their REM was significantly less and much more infrequent. They ended up having a lot more uh, longer bouts of being awake. And of course, the cold room ended up having deeper REM and a longer series of REM, which is of course what's important for spatial awareness, for memory, for storing everything. REM is not necessarily our deep sleep, but it's harder to get into because you don't get into it for a little while. So if you're not sleeping through the night, or you're not sleeping for at least a few hours straight, you're never getting a chance to actually enter that REM cycle, which is very important just for not feeling foggy and weird, okay? Now, Overall muscle recovery, all that stuff is different. Anyhow, I do recommend that you check out the Chili Pad. There's also a special discount for anyone that does want to check it out that's watching my videos. Okay, the next thing is nothing that's biologically super interesting. This is sensory deprivation. If you have noise canceling headphones that you can sleep with, I recommend you try it, okay? When you look at a lot of the different studies outside of body temperature, almost all the studies come down to one simple fact, light, Heat and noise wake people up, no matter what the situation, and it prevents that rapid eye movement. Sensory deprivation, keeping it crazy dark and keeping it crazy quiet, is actually more effective than using a white noise machine. Okay? If you don't have blackout curtains, get some blackout curtains. The science doesn't lie, it's so simple. If you want a deeper sleep and you want to enter more REM cycles, keep your room darker, keep it freaking quiet, and also do what you can to keep it temperature neutral so you're not having spikes up and down. Okay, the last one is one that is pretty important. Now, if you don't drink, you can probably just shut off the video, but you might want to hear this just in case. Alcohol before bed has very negative effects on your sleep, and it does this simply because of specific neurotransmitters. It prevents you from getting into REM. The REM latency is terrible. You almost never get into REM, and when you do, it's really, really small. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Alcohol Research and Health, and it literally found that after alcohol consumption, acetylcholine function was not nearly as good. They found that ethanol bound to acetylcholine receptors. Now, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that's responsible for essentially our brain functioning properly and for like kind of dictating specific other, other neurotransmitters to kind of do their thing. So what we're finding is if ethanol is bound to acetylcholine, GABA cycles are way messed up, glutamate cycles are way messed up, and we have little surges of glutamate and little surges of GABA that mess up going into REM. What's interesting is gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA, relaxes you when you fall asleep, but GABA actually goes down when you go into REM sleep. And it turns out that alcohol, or ethanol, ends up jacking up GABA to the point where you feel relaxed, but you're not actually getting restorative sleep. So that's why people will drink to put themselves to sleep, but it doesn't actually get you the REM sleep. It's just elevating GABA so you're sitting there in the floaty world, but you're not actually getting the restorative sleep that you need to get by on three or four hours of sleep. So if you have a new kid, if you have something that's happening in your life and you need to be able to just get quick sleep, you need to implement these tips, at least on the nights where you require that sleep the most. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in and do check out Chili Pack because it is pretty awesome and also get some noise canceling headphones and some blackout curtains. I will see you in the next video.